Tonight's lesson is lesson 7.2, write fractions as sums. Our essential question is, how can you write a fraction as a sum of fractions with the same denominator? Please make sure that you are on page 135 of your Go Math book, and let's get started. Okay, let's look at number one. Number one says, write the fraction of a as a sum of unit fractions. So if we look at our fraction models here, we see that we have four fifths. That's what my model is showing me because I have five equal pieces and I have four of those pieces shaded in. So I have four fifths. Well, if I wanna write it as a sum of unit fractions, that just means that I'm going to break it up into different fraction amounts and make it into an addition problem. So what they did up here was they said, well, four fifths is also the same as saying one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth plus one fifth well, that equals four fifths also. So I just broke it up into a different fraction amount. So I called this one fifth, this was one fifth, we have one fifth and one fifth. And if I add them all together, that equals four fifths. And I also want you to pay attention, boys and girls, that it says they wanted the sum of unit fractions, which means that we needed to make this into an addition problem, adding up one unit at a time. So one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, and one fifth. Okay, let's look at number two. I have three eighths for my fraction, and then I have my model for three eighths also. I know that this is three eighths because I have my fraction bar is broken up into eight equal pieces, and three of them are shaded. So I want to break this up into a sum of unit fractions. So I want to make it into an addition problem, showing the answer will be three eighths. So what I can do is I can break up each of my pieces and call it one eighth. So if I have each piece is one eighth, then I can turn it into an addition problem. So I can say, well, three eighths equals one eighth plus one eighth plus another one eighth. I know that that equals three eighths. Now, and since they wanted the sum of unit fractions, they wanted us to break it up using one unit at a time. Okay, let's look at number three in your Go Math book. They want us to break up six twelfths as the sum of unit fractions. So we have our model down here, and it's showing six out of 12 pieces are shaded. And if you're like me, you're also thinking that 6 twelfths is also equal to a half. So let's go ahead and make an addition problem for 6 twelfths using unit fractions. Well, if I'm going to use unit fractions, that means that I'm going to break this up into one unit at a time. So I have 1 twelfths, 1 twelfth here, another 1 twelfth. So far I have 3 twelfths. 4 twelfths, 5 twelfths, and 6 twelfths. So I am going to make an addition problem using each unit at a time to add up to 6 twelfths. So I would have 1 twelfth plus another 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth plus 1 twelfth. So far I have 4 twelfths. Here's 5 twelfths, and here is 6 twelfths. So my unit fractions are adding up, and they are going to equal up to 6 twelfths. Because I have 1 twelfth 6 times. Okay, here's number four in your Go Math book. We have four fourths, and if you're noticing, it's also equal to one whole because all of the fourths are shaded. Now, 
what I would like you to do is I would like you to write four fourths as a sum of unit fractions. So I would like you to write an addition problem to equal four fourths and it's gonna be using the unit fractions. So one unit at a time. So this is one fourth and each piece is worth one fourth. I want you to make an addition problem that equals four fourths. Go ahead and pause the video, press play when you're ready to go over the answer with me. Okay, here is four fourths written as the sum of unit fractions, meaning I took an addition, or I took the four fourths and made it into an addition problem, and I broke it into one unit at a time. So I have one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth plus one fourth equals four fourths. Okay, number five says write the fraction as a sum of fractions three different ways, which means that I have to take seven tenths and write it as an addition problem, but I'm going to use different ways to show seven tenths. So one way we know is to break it up into unit fractions. So one tenth at a time, and then it has to equal seven tenths. So here is one tenth plus 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 another one tenth. Well, that equals seven tenths. I have one tenth seven times. Now, I want you to think, how else can I make an addition problem to add up to seven tenths. Well, I know that two plus five gives me seven, so two tenths plus five tenths would also give me seven tenths because my denominators are the same all I need to do is add up my numerators. Two plus five gives me seven. So two tenths plus five tenths is seven tenths. Now, I want you to think, what's another way that we can make seven tenths? Well, I could also say three tenths plus four tenths is seven tenths because my denominators are the same. All I need to say is three plus four is seven. Now there are other possibilities that we could do, but they just wanted three different ways. Okay, number six is the same thing. Write the fraction as a sum of fractions three different ways. So if you have six six, you're gonna have to break it up into a sum of fractions and you're gonna need to write it three different ways for me. So go ahead, work on that. Press play when you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, here are the different ways that I came up with to make sum of fractions for 6 6. Now you could have came up with different ways. As long as they add up to 6 6, you're fine. So I just broke mine up into unit fractions and I added up 1 6 six times and I got 6 6. My next one I did 3 6 plus 3 6, that equals 6 6. Then I added for my last one 2 6 plus 1 6 plus three six, and that gave me six six also. As long as you had something that added up to six six, you were good. Okay, let's look at number seven in your problem solving section. It says Miguel's teacher asks him to color four eighths of the grid. He must use three colors, red, blue, and green. There must be more green sections than red sections. How can Miguel color the sections of his grid to follow all the rules? So I want you to go ahead and work on number seven on your own and press pause while you're working on it. Press play whenever you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, let's go over our answer. So I had to make sure that I shaded in four eighths, which is also equal to one half of the grid. He had to use the three colors, red, blue, and green. And there had to be more green sections than red sections. And it had to equal to four eighths. So what I did was I shaded in one red, one blue, because I had to use those two colors, which was one eighth plus one eighth. Then I had to shade in the rest 
two eighths green, and I have more green than red. So one eighth plus two one eighth plus two eighths equals four eighths. Okay, let's look at number eight. It says Petra is asked to color six sixths of her grid. So basically one whole. She must use three colors, blue, red, and pink. There must be more blue sections than red and pink sections. What are the different ways Petra can color the sections of her grid and follow all these rules? So I want you to try this problem out on your own. Now there could be different, many different answers, but just as long as we equal 6-6, six, six, then we'll be okay. So go ahead and work this out. Press play when you're ready to go over the answer. Okay, let's go over our answer. So my rules were that I needed to use three colors, blue, red, and pink. I needed to to shade in six six of the grid, which would be the whole grid. And I had to have more blue than red or pink sections. So one possibility could have been, I could have done one of the six pieces pink, one of the six pieces red, and the other four pieces, I could have done them blue. Did I follow the rules? Yes. So I could have said, well, that's one, two, three, four, four sixths, plus my pink was one six, plus my red was another one six. And that equals six six. Let's look at another possibility. I could have done three sixths blue, and I could have done two sixths red and one sixth pink. Do they all add up to six six? Yes, they do. Do I have more blue than red or pink? Yes, I do. Here's one more possibility. Okay, here's another possibility. We could have had our three six that are blue. Then we could have had our plus our two six that were pink and our one six that was red. As long as it added up to six six and we had more blue sections than red or pink sections, we followed the rules. Okay, here are your Quillenburg questions for tonight on page 136 in your Go Math book. For number one, please pay attention and make sure you understand that it's asking for the sum of unit fractions. So make sure you're paying attention to that word unit fractions. Then come and work on number two. Also, you need to work on the rest of the questions on page 136. Make sure to assess yourself, and I will see you tomorrow in class. Bye!